message. Last Sunday we spoke about why we need we vision as we progress into 2023. Somebody will ask you a question and say, Pastor, we are in November, first week of November, last week of October. Why are you preaching this kind of message? You will soon discover the reason. But I need to get you said. I need to get you said I'm prepared for 2023. I need to get myself set and prepared for 2023. So it's not about you alone. I also intend to be fully prepared for the things that God will be doing in the year 2023. I said last week, 2023 should not be another year that will pass us by without concrete achievements and progress made. We clearly stated that in these perilous and evil times, we all need vision backed by prayer, watered with the word of God, and with the help of the Holy Spirit to survive in these times. So you need vision. So the message last Sunday is you need vision. And we went to ahead to define what vision is. It's the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination and wisdom. That's what may open to us Jeremiah 29, 11, my popular scripture. I know the thought that I have towards you, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future of, and a hope. So God himself has a vision for you. As a vision for me. In those days when I was contesting the governorship of my state, one of my brothers told me it's not in God's plans that I should be. And the person he was talking to said, when, when did you become a counselor for God? Or when did he appoint you into his council? To be a part discuss, to be person who will be discussing with God. People may write you down. They may say you can't make it. Even your own situation. Who are we talking to yesterday? And my wife said, even you yourself can discourage yourself. The situation can discourage you. You can see so many things that are not looking right. This is not the way you expected them, you expect them to be. But whatever you are going through is just a passing phase. It will soon pass away. Nothing lasts forever. And it does not matter whether you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. So we are not talking about Christianity. For the Christian, the assurance is even much more. And that's why I never believe in faith. If it's happening, what's the solution? You need to start to act to to think about and plan for the future with imagination and wisdom. Management scientists will say it must be smart. I agree. But with the word of God, everything is smart. The seemingly impossible become very possible because the Bible says, Jesus was talking to them, he said to him that believe, what will happen? All things are possible. He said to him, who believes nothing shall be impossible. Absolutely nothing. We also went further to define the act of or power of sensing with the eyes. Power of anticipating. 
I don't want you to go into 2023 the same way you enter 2022 without any, this is what I'm going to achieve. This is what I want to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, I am 66 years old. I have planned for 75. I have vision when I'm 70. I have vision for when I'm 85. I have vision for when I am 95. I was talking to my boss. Was it on Monday? And I told him, in about four years' time, five years' time, I should leave the company and be enjoying my, <laughs> and go and do some other things. That's a vision. What you can see is what you can think about. So you need to start seeing it. And that which you think, you will easily become. When you see it, you think about it. When you think about it, you become it. Like Proverbs 23, 7 said, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And we gave several examples. Abraham, Daniel, three Hebrew children. How they, in the face of many adversities, conquered because they saw, they believed, and they walked the walk. Most Christians don't walk the walk today. They are looking for, where did they say a miracle is happening again? And they will rush there. The man will pour saliva on them. Nothing will happen. Or the woman will pour saliva on them. Nothing will happen after they have finished. That church serve. I think they are. And pastors will play all kind of tricks. Because they, they want to keep the crowd. I will, not pick, I will not play any trick to keep you. I want you to believe in yourself and know that you are a prophet, know that you are a priest, know that you are a king, know that the power belongs to you because he said, all powers in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go in my name. He didn't say bishop, go. He didn't say pastor, go. He didn't say evangelist, go. Anybody that is willing to go is ready to is 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 going to have access to the same power. That year in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. You remember Acts chapter one verse eight. He said, "When the Holy Ghost would have come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses, ladies and gentlemen. You are not a witness of Christ if His effect is not in your life. Are you hearing me?" If you can't see the effect of Christ in your life. Today I will stand here and boast in the Lord about this building. You can see the effect. You can't doubt that there's God here. If you are still doubting, then you have a problem. So go into 2023 believing something for yourself. Is somebody hearing me? Say, I heard you, Pastor. I didn't hear your particular voice. Now you are going to be writing it down. <laughs> and as if we discussed it, as if we discussed it, the church office have already provided this thing. I didn't tell them when I preached last Sunday. So you take two copies of this. What will be your number one? To know him more. What will be your number two? Two copies. You will put one copy for yourself and give me the other copy on 31st of December. You see it. I won't read your, this thing. I don't even have time to read. I have so many books I have not read. So, it's not like a Ya Joshua in the drama. Ya Bossi in the drama. No, not like that. I want to read it. 
but I will stand to pray over it continually together with the wife of my youth. So you are going to get two copies each. And where you need scripture for what you are believing God for, come to us and ask us. We are going to help you with the scripture. In these days and age, you don't even need anybody. Everybody has phone. Everybody has Bible in the phone. You can search for what you want. And when you get the right scripture, you put it in front of what you have written. Now, if you have extra pages, after this page is covered, you will look for your own play sheet. Is somebody hearing me? I, I don't care. You can write 100. You can write 1 million. This first page is what we are giving you. You look for, don't just tear any exercise book. You know when you ask people to write something, they just tear it haphazardly. Tear it with respect to God. The king of kings, when you are going to present something to your king in the village, do you present it anyhow? Well, king of kings we are talking about here. And this thing is yours. So you make two copies. Buy a postcard sheet. If you don't have money to buy full scholarship, all of you, three of you combine. Because I don't know how many pages you want to write. Three of you combine. Each full scholarship has 500. By the time you finish 500, <laughs> you, 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 would have finished, you would have finished writing everything. Is somebody hearing me? Then you will bring it and we will pray over it. You will join us in the prayer. We are not the only people that we pray. You with 21 days of fasting. We will pray. And next year will be great for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we are giving you how many pages? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says... And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the table that he may run that read it. You know, when I write my own, I will put it on top of my bed. Hang it there. So when I wake up, I will see it when I, and I will be praying it. Now, but there's something you must do if we must get a result. There is something you must do if we must get the desired result. You must sow seed into your vision. When we mention seed in the church, everybody starts shouting, hey, you want money. Nobody wants your money. <laughs> Nobody wants your money. If you give to God, you give to God. If you don't give, that's your business. But you have to sow seed into your vision. Have you seen a farmer who plants something? You have written it. That's the planting. And then go home to sleep and does not visit the farm until the time of the harvest. Will he meet anything in the farm? He will not meet anything in the farm. He has planted. He continue going there. That is putting seed. He continue weeding. That is putting seed. He continue praying for rain so that what he has planted will happen. That is continuing to put seed on the planting that he has done. We agree with you totally. If you are a scriptural, uh, spiritual person, God plants Apollo waters. It's God that makes it to grow. But God has given you a part to play in making it to grow. You can't plant and just drop it like that. So I try to this message, sow seed into your vision. Sow seed into your vision. You have written them. We have seen them. You have given us a copy. 
and everything is all right, you have to sow a seed into your vision. First seed you sow is to learn to put God first. Learn to put God first. Did you notice that when David got to the valley of Elah, he didn't say Goliath was defiling the army of Israel. He didn't say Goliath was defiling, defiling Saul, the king. He said, who is this infidel that you should defy the army of the living God? God was more important to him. And that's why Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So in 2023, I am going to seek God more. I've written my vision. Very good. But I got to seek God more. I got to put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto him. Paul, having written many books, having done wonderfully many miracles, we saw the things that happened in his life. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the hope of his calling. Are you telling me with all the revelation you have, you mean you have not known him enough? Do you know that Paul separated himself for about 15 years. He was not talking to anybody. He went away, studying the scriptures and comparing it with the life of Jesus Christ. He had so many revelations. He was a lawyer. A mother member of the Pharisees and probably a member of the Sahendrins. A renowned lawyer. So he studied all their law and was able to pick out Jesus in the Old Testament. And he wrote about 14 books in the Bible. That same person said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the hope of his calling. The problem with the church today we are either worshipping our pastor or worshipping the issues that we are bedeviled with or we are worshipping ourselves. God becomes number last. We are last can be any number. In 2023, you need to put God first. And that is the first seed you are going to use to water your, your vision. I want you to know that without seed sown, there can be no harvest. If you don't sow seed, you can't harvest anything. Anytime you desire a harvest, you must sow. So when I write those my vision down, and that's why I quickly say number one should be for you to know him more. And number two should be for you to serve him. Because he also said in Exodus 23, he said, and you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your food and your water. So it comes from service. You walk into the church every day and you walk away and you do nothing for God. And you are expecting him to answer you the way the person who is doing something for God. If anything you do in the church, you, you backbite. You are bossing. Galatians 6, 7 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, 
that he should, he shall also reap. For he that sow to the flesh, of the flesh shall reap corruption, but he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. I like the amplified version of this. They do not be deceived and deluded and misled. Deceived, deluded, led, misled. God will not allow himself to be snared at. Mm -mm. Scorned, disdained, mocked by mere pretensions and, or, or pretensions and professions. Or by his precepts being set aside. He embedded the inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God for whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he shall reap. The vision you write is the harvest that you will reap in the coming year. Your seed is your planting is to first write them. And every seed has a future. I'm going to be, there, there was a message I preached some years back about seed. Seed don't die. They don't die. And seed create future for the harvest. Job 4, 8 says, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, plow iniquity, and so we can reap the same. Whatever you plant is what you sow, what you reap. Hosea 8, 7. And I can continue reading so many scriptures. For they have sown the wind. They will reap what? The wild wind. The principle of seed is that you plant one, you reap several. Everyone will always have what they put in. That's why Romans chapter 2 verse 6 says, who will render to every man according to his deed. What you do is what you get. To them who by patience, continuance, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life is what they get. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, unrighteous indignation and wrath, Tribulation and anguish is what they get. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone that worketh the good. To the Jew first and also to the general. So the first seed is put God first. The second seed is look for a word to back what you are looking for. I want healing. By his stripes, I am healed. Put it there. I want deliverance for a family person. Jesus came and delivered them. Look for a scripture to back up. I have given scriptures for number one and two. Look for scriptures to back three to end. Where N is great is any number you want. Don't just write it from your mind. This thing that I'm looking at, is there a Bible passage that will back me up? Because ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the matter is that if you don't base it on the will of God, on the word of God, it may not be on the will in the will of God. The word of God and the will of God are one and the same. They are interchangeable. First John chapter 5 verse 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if he hears us, what does he do? He answers. So I'm going to base 
I need a car. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. That's what the word says. I am suffering from this lack. Oh, lions may lack, hyenas may lack, but the children of God can never lack. Is there in the Bible? Once I was young, David said, and now I'm old. I've never seen the Lord. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. All his seed beg for bread. The whole creation was created by the word of God as we saw in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. As you can see, through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. Your word, the word of God framing it with what your desire is brings it to pass. Many of us when we pray, you need to see people pray. They are praying either in fear. I taught them last um, the last day of the fasting, which you didn't come for. If you came, say amen. I was here. That was a powerful word that day. Praise God. I, 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 said, I said, look, you, you have arrived at a point that your boldness, because it's only the violent that take it by force. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered what? Violent. And only the violent can take it. You have to be violent about it. Your desire. I won't accept. Many of us will take number two. Since I can't get number one, let me take number two. I can't get number two, too. I will go to number three. Why are you, why are you like that? If you desired it, you wanted it. Ha. Let me tell you a story. When I was pursuing my wife, I traveled from Lagos to Zaria all over the night. Because I desired it. And she never gave me jack attention. Jack attention. But I kept pursuing. I kept pressurizing. I kept pressurizing. I worked harder. You want it. Ah. Jesus is God. Jesus. I need you to understand it. You need to wake up to the reality that Satan is not a gentleman. It's not. So if you are very gentle with actually father <laughs> you pray like Americans. Father you see we have this. That's why the country is going down. You pray Monday of fire prayer. <laughs> fire. I won't agree. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Number three, continually pray on each of those visions. You have written them down. It's your vision. You don't just abandon it. Continually pray on them. That's the second number three seed. Continue pray, continually pray on them. Declare them continuously with the word of God that you put by the side. Decree them without fear and without doubt. You remember the story of because of my time? I'll give you the story in Mark chapter 11. And I think from verse uh, 12 there, uh, Jesus was passing by and he was hungry. You remember? He was very hungry. And then he looked, he saw a fig tree. And he went there, it was blossoming. Not everything that is blossoming is good. Though. This thing had leaves. Very green, very luscious, very beautiful. And the Lord said, well, paraventure I can get something to eat here. He got there and didn't find anything. My thought is that, Lord, you should have known. Now you are all knowing. But he wanted to demonstrate something. He got there he found nothing. And he said, no man shall eat of you and come back and continue to go. 
They went from Bethany to Jerusalem. In the evening, they came back. I'm sure everybody was looking at that tree. What will happen to this tree? Hey, what will happen to this tree? Hey, what will happen to this tree? And then the following day, they were going back to Jerusalem from Bethany. And lo and behold, the tree is dried up. And Peter said, look, master, the tree that thou causes yesterday is now dried up. And the master said, have faith in God. There's nothing in this. Have the God kind of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what the God kind of faith is? Eh? It, God does not say, let there be light. And be looking, will the light come? Will the light not come? Will the light come? Will the light not come? He has spoken. That's it. I don't know whether you understand. Eh? He has spoken. That's it. I need this in my life. Have the God kind of faith. And then he said to them, whoever shall ask the mountain to be moved and be cast in the ocean and has no doubt in his mind about what he is saying. Kenneth Hagin said, he mentioned saying there in one verse, five times. That's how important your words are. Don't join your neighbor to say the country is bad. The country is bad. Me, I'm enjoying this country. Sincerely. And I'm not joking about it. My wife, she's enjoying this country. If I tell her now, oh, madam, we are going to... One time I wanted to buy a house. In... I didn't even have the money, but the way I deal with God, when I want it... I, I say, I give myself a time like God. We want a house. My wife said, what are you going to do with it? I said, just to keep it here. And when we come, he said, how often do you come? How often do you come? What do you want to do with it? Since Google didn't have the money, I dropped the idea. <laughs> Praise God, somebody. But you, you are waiting until you have money before you think of that car that is really needed in your life. What are you thinking of when you get money? When I need it, I just pronounce it. God, I need this. And it's not because I'm better than you. No. It's not because I'm more righteous than you. We all wear the same righteousness of Christ. But ladies and gentlemen, the bold, the Old shall be the, the, the word shall be bold. The righteous shall be as bold as the lion. Lion doesn't run away from anybody. They, you run away from Satan. Every time. Every time. He's not even pursuing you. You are running. Yeah. He's not pursuing you. You are running. Every time they are, they are doing deliverance every time. They do deliverance on the same person today. Tomorrow they do deliverance. Next year they do deliverance on the same person. When will it be delivered? Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Wake up. You want it? Be bold about it. Water it with your boldness. I want this. When he said, arise and be it, we didn't have money. But we never prayed. I say it, people in the church, please tell, tell me I'm not saying the truth. We never prayed. Not once. For God, provide us money to be this thing. Not once. And it's not because I have money or my wife has money. That's telling me. Each time we reach the milestone, and we, we just look at God. Okay, you sent us to be. <laughs> it is time to get the next money. He just opened doors somewhere from unexpected place. Unexpected. And I go and I tell my wife, I say, this God. There was one I told her, she was, she was in the kitchen. She fell down on the ground and started rolling. This God, what will I, what can, what, what can we do without you? Ladies and gentlemen, be bold about what you write. And please don't write anything that is uh, that doesn't make any sense. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Number four, yes, I've dealt with it. Have violent faith concerning what you are penned down. Satan, friends, parents, etc., will try to discourage you. Hold on to your faith violently. Faith is an energizer. Violent faith will make you sing praises in the midst of adversity. When others will be laughing at you or punishing you or, or looking at you in ways you, will, you may not like and you keep on in faith. They will come and laugh with you. It's only faith that will make violent faith that will make Adam Abraham believe. Abraham, a 99 year old man. I think I should explain that to you. 99 year old man. Even some of us that are 66 now. Performance. Praise God. 99 year old man. And God said by this time, I said, now the wife is also 90. And God said, according to the time of life, what is the time of life? Nine months. By this time, nine months, you will get your child. And Abraham, Sarah laughed in the where she was. <laughs> Shall I also? And 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 God heard him and said, "Why are you laughing?" He said, "Because of that, you will name the child laughter." Abraham delivered, or Sarah delivered. It's men that women that deliver, not men. Sarah delivered. And after some time, Sarah died. Abraham was still strong at 120. He married other women. Not one, not two. Read your Bible. That is how strong he became. You have to remember in the book of uh, Romans chapter 4 from verse 17, he said, they, 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 their bodies already been as good as dead. But once the word of God came, it energized the death, changed it into something else. And ladies and gentlemen, after Sarah went away, Abraham said, I cannot remain alone. He married Keturah, he married other, other people, and still had more concubines. Concubines are not good, though. This is not a justification. This is not a justification. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you understand what I mean. Are you happy with me today? If you are not happy, say I'm not happy. If you are happy, say I'm happy. Praise God. I'm happy with you too. God bless you. Before we close the service, I cannot do but call people who are not giving their life to Jesus Christ. Violent faith start from here. In the gallery, in the sanctuary, violent faith start from here. All heads bow, all eyes shut. For you to enjoy this thing that we are to set the foundation properly. The Bible says if the foundation be, de be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You have to set a proper foundation and the proper foundation is to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you are like that, years back my wife did it. Years back I did it. If you are like that, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, please lift up your hand and let me agree with you in prayer. Anybody here? Is there anybody in the sanctuary, in the gallery? 
you know you are not sure of your faith, you are not sure of your salvation, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just lift up your hand and we will pray together. of time I will lead all of us in this prayer of faith kindly try to invite people to the church everybody say with me Father in the name of Jesus Christ forgive me all my sins both known and unknown, intentional and otherwise, I roll them all to you, along with my many labors, unto you I roll. Today, I confess openly with my mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ is now the owner of my life, and I believe with all my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I am therefore saved. I believe in my heart that I'm now right with God through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. And I openly declare my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ today. I am saved. I am delivered by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. I take my full rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. From now on, my light shines forth as a believer in Jesus Christ. Sustain me, O Lord, that I may not fall, that I may not fail, that I may not falter in this journey with you. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Thank you, Jesus.